checking out Kotaku Banzai. Okay, confession time. So, my very first video that I posted was a video about hardwood cutting of Japanese maples. And, you know, I started this channel during the pandemic early on as, you know, something to do to pass the time. And um, so I started my very first video with, with that project. And there's, there's been people over the last couple of years that comment and ask about how it uh, was successful or not. And the truth is, it was an absolute failure. 100% failure. Every single cutting died. And, you know, that was a shame. But I tried, and I keep trying, uh, like I'm sure you do, right? You have successes and failures, but you just keep plugging on. So, yeah, that video and had a abysmal uh, turnout. But I've tried to refine how I've approached propagation, especially for Japanese hardwoods, Japanese maple hardwood cuttings, and I've tried to improve my success rate over time, and I've stumbled upon something where I, or I've refined it to a point where I'm, I'm getting good results, and I will show you and prove it in this video that it can be done and that uh, I've got something good going on. So stick around. I'm going to show you here in just a second what I've been doing, and I hope that you'll like it and take these methods and propagate your own Japanese maples because they're beautiful trees and they make incredibly beautiful bonsai. Here we go. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a uh, rubberneck kind of plastic tote. And I filled this with a mixture of perlite, vermiculite, uh, a succulent blend. There's no soil in here. This is all supposed to be inert. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, I think number one being soil-borne diseases in a propagation chamber. Or a propagation mix and I'm trying to minimize root rot okay so we want we want fantastic drainage we want the medium to hold moisture of course but it has to have fantastic drainage to prevent root rot and I think this has been a great medium for that I think my first video which was a total failure um, failed because there was more of a soil component and it encouraged root rot and killed all the cuttings. This, however, is a much better mix. And I got most of this at your local hardware store. And uh, it was very light, very fluffy, and it's incredibly well draining. And we're gonna show you closer up some of the cuttings. When you're propagating, whether from softwood or hardwood cuttings, you get really uh, excited when you see leaves come out but there's kind of a false, a false start because some of that can just be from stored energy within the cutting itself. So you have to be patient because they might sprout leaves and still die. These though are a full season's growth. So this is currently middle of August, 2022. And I struck these cuttings last December time. So not only do they have first flush, but they have second flush of leaves. So that pretty much to me guarantees that there's gonna be roots down in there as I dig them up to pot them up. I'd like to get them into a new pot now so they have about a month to settle in before going dormant for this winter. And I did strike about, I don't know, 110, 120 cuttings. I think maybe we're down to 10 here. It's tough to see, but it's 10 free trees. And it looks like pretty much just the green Japanese maples made it. I don't know why, but I did put in a bunch of red ones, some other fancier cultivars like the cut leaf and some of my other bonfire and winter orange. But I'm going to get these guys out of here, check the roots, get them potted up into individual pots in preparation for winter dormancy. 
So I think this project was successful for a couple of different reasons, uh, which were different from the very first one that I posted. Uh, first of all is I used a deeper container so that the stems of the cuttings could be, you know, four or five inches deep buried in the media, as opposed to the first one that I did in plug trays, which was only about an inch, inch and a quarter. So I think the depth there is a major factor. Uh, another one is I used this, and I used Clonex gel this time instead of the powder. I do like the gel. I like it a lot better. Obviously, this project gave me some success, so it, it did better than the powder. Uh, I'm going to keep using the gel moving forward. Uh, I think the third thing is the inert media that I used, which was a soilless media. And it, it had excellent drainage and excellent aeration, but it did hold moisture. And I think that was probably the, the main ticket right there. So furthermore, I'm gonna keep using this media moving forward year after year, hopefully, and I'll add to it as needed. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually use a, a small uh, uh, bleach solution when all of these cuttings are out. And I'm gonna bleach the mix through just to kill off any pathogens, microbes, bacteria, or fungus that might have gotten in there through the season. And I'm just gonna bleach it so that it's sterile uh, for the next year's propagation. All right, so like I said, I took these cuttings in the fall of 2021. I stuck them in in about November, December time frame. I put a lid on it and just let them outside you know, in the cold, not in the garage this time, but outside with a lid on them all winter long, all spring. And here we are in late summer, the next year, it's August, 2022. They've been growing strong, at least the ones that, that made it. I can give them a little tug. Of course, they're, they're in there. And I have not dug them up, so you're gonna get to see this live uh, just as I'm seeing it and I'm gonna hope this is the big reveal That there's some roots down in there So I'm gonna use this guy here so I can get a nice wide and deep trough in there and hopefully very gently get some of these guys up and We'll check and see if they're root rooted roots and we'll pot them up into something individual here to get ready for winter So we got roots. That's pretty exciting, huh? 
six or seven of them. Look at that. From a cutting that I just stuck and forgot about. So it totally can be done. We succeeded this year, guys. This works. It's a bit of a gamble to go ahead and dig these out and hope for roots and film it in hopes of showing it on YouTube. It rem reminds me of, uh, like, what back in the 90s, Geraldo Rivera went to excavate Al Capone something or other and uh, came up with nothing. It was completely empty and just a failed attempt. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. So thankfully this worked out and we've got roots on all of our cuttings. So let's go ahead and pot them up, huh? So it turns out I've got seven cuttings, seven pots. And this is a combination of potting soil mix and some grit. I had this laying around. It's got some lava rock and akadama and some pumice. And I just kind of made a, no, no exact proportions, just to make it gritty enough because I don't want it to compact around the roots. So we, again, we need really good drainage. You know the old adage that Japanese maples don't like wet feet. So we need good drainage, but we need it to hold moisture. So here we are, it's all emptied out now. I don't know if you can see how light and airy this stuff is. 
it hardly weighs anything when it's dry. When it's damp, it gets a, a little heavier, but it's obviously a great, great propagation media. Vermite, verm vermiculite, perlite, succulent blend. That's what I use. So I'll, uh, I'm gonna bleach it out to sterilize it. Not today, but then I'm gonna keep it and use it again here in a couple of months. And there they are. Seven successful hardwood cutting new trees for free. If you love bonsai, you love free trees. And Japanese maples are wonderful, wonderful, beautiful trees. All right, guys, there you go. Till the next one.